All right, what's going on, guys? I am bringing you part two of my post COD Champs 2015 analysis. In this ep in this part, I guess I'm going to talk about the individual stats, accomplishments, etc. And then I'm also going to break down the top eight teams and what I thought about each of those. If you guys missed part one, I talked about just all the teams that are outside the top eight and kind of what, what went wrong with them. And also just a little bit of general talk about the event itself. If you want to check that out, I'll put it in the description as well. But other than that, let's let's go ahead and get started with this because I have a lot to talk about so first let me talk about the top stats top individual leaderboards and stuff like that for each of the categories the top 15 KDs I'm gonna put them on the screen I'm not gonna read them out to you whatever just the notable ones are clay and scump obviously above everyone else and then you know you see a lot of big names here and there three four and five I'd like to also point out with Saints Carmen apathy because they all placed out of the top eight even with having players in the top five KD and the reason for this also oh, I forgot to mention this also these KDs are all in Inflated, and what I mean by that is they're combining pool play and bracket play and I'm gonna show you a stat here in a second that'll kind of really give you a true idea of the KDs uh, but obviously but what I'm what I mean by inflated KD is because a lot of these teams players were put in pools with very bad and no offense if that's your country or whatever but very bad international teams that they're not very good and so playing these not very good players they got to really boost their KD up and then when they came into bracket play they didn't play very well and their KD went down so this is kind of an average of the two KDs but luckily there is a KD for pool versus bracket play so you guys will see who the real true good performers were this weekend versus the ones who just inflated their KD playing against lesser competition so I just keep that in mind when you see all these KDs that's why only three of these players in the top 10 KD placed in the top eight because the other ones that are in there kind of inflated their KD maybe or didn't play so well in bracket play so anyways just take that with a grain of salt because this KD is not a true normal KD but anyways top 15 slayers Clay, noticeably at number one. Scump should technically be at number two. It doesn't show map count in this, but a lot of these players did not play very many maps. But obviously, all these players were all above 30 kills, so that's extremely good. Now we have our top 15 SD KDs. Noticeably, the best SD player in the world, Killa, number one. That's pretty cool, actually. Uh, I was actually kind of surprised to see that. He's usually a good SD KD, but at number one, that's that's pretty impressive. So good for him. And he played seven maps, so it's a, it's a legit KD. That's another thing. A lot of these teams you see only play like three, four, five maps or whatever. Whereas, you know, Attach, Killa, Formal, Twiz, Neslo, Jcap all played a, a reasonable amount of map Scump as well. So Scump's really improved his SMD quite a bit. I feel like a lot of people have noticed that as well. As, anyways, that's something to point out as well. Now, the real stat of the day, in my opinion, this is the, this is the stat of the tournament. I've highlighted some names on the left. So what you're looking at right now is, is a pool play KD versus a bracket play KD. Pool play is on the left, the bracket play is on the right. All the people on the right have impressive. Any Anybody that's listed on the right is impressive. Anybody lifts on the left, not so impressive. For example, I'll give you an example. Zuma, if you look at his pool plate KD, 1.41, and if you look at the right, he's nowhere on the right. He actually had a negative bracket play KD. Basically, you can look at the overall KDs of Envy, like I showed in the last video, I didn't realize this, and you think, damn, Zuma actually had a really good event, but realistically, he went from having the second highest KD to having a negative KD when he actually played against good competition. I'm not I'm not trying to rip him. I'm not, I'm not roasting or anything. I'm just pointing out some stuff that so that's what I mean by some of the KDs are infl inflated so anyways I outlined all the people on the left who had a really high pool play KD and then were not even in the top you know whatever 20 or so for bracket play KD and most likely had a negative bracket play KD I just want to point that out so the, it's Vicento, Nagafin, Classic, Nade Shot, and Replay so just point that out take that information how you want to take that you can, guys can kind of see some of the comparisons most notably I want to say Scump and Clay had extremely good bracket play and pool play KD so that's something to point out for there as well and I also want to point out Aqua he didn't even have a good pool play KD but he had a really high bracket play KD which means you know when when game time when it came down to it and the matches that really mattered Aqua showed up so I want to go ahead and give him some props for that proof he had a really good event as well one of the highest bracket play KD so anyways anyone that is really high up there on the right they had a really good event and anyone that's high up there on the left I mean great but those matches didn't really matter just want to point that in there I feel like that's a really useful statistic to really get an idea of who actually played well and who didn't now now, let us talk about the top eight teams. I'm going to just blow through uh, some of these teams because I don't really have too much to say about them. TK, they placed eighth. I mean, they did all right. Better than last year. They choked last year. At least they got some money this year. The dynamic of TK, I always get the vibe from them that they're not really a championship team, but they're a team that's always going to place well. You know, they might get second here or there, like they did a lot in Black Ops 2 and stuff, but I never really get the vibe from them that they're going to actually win. I don't know. I don't know if you guys feel the same way or not, but that's just the vibe I get from that team. AR, surprisingly,
surprisingly well for the roster they have. If you look at their roster, I would not think they're a good team, but they played well together. Maybe they got some good teamwork or whatever. I didn't really watch too many of their matches, but they they did pretty well, and I'm very surprised with them. Mind Freak, I don't really know what to say about them. I don't know too much about them. They're Australian. Congrats on placing, you know, top six. That's that's a good a big accomplishment. Good shit, I guess. Prof, basically a pickup team. Money B and Richard dick stacy with the fresh cut as well i must add he got rid of the bowl cut bose always does well with pickup teams i don't know why that's just like his thing always has been always will be i guess i don't know tr okay smartest team in the game they are on another level from everyone else mentally at least you know they don't have the best gun skill they don't have the best slayers they don't have the most known players they have the best teamwork and the most knowledge of the game easily out of any other team if you want to learn and get better at aw at competitive aw watch tr play you will learn things from them you'll learn spots you'll learn strats crazy shit they do the weirdest shit and it works for them and i feel like that's part of the reason they do so good is because teams have never seen tr do that you know they've never seen another team play like that so it catches them off guard and they don't know how to react they have to adjust stuff like that and that's the reason that tr is such a good team they, they play the game very if, if i could equate it someone would be kind of like fizzerb you know how fizzerb does like the weirdest shit tr is a team full of fizzerbs all four of them just do weird shit and it works really well for them so if you want to learn stuff i definitely recommend watching them play on now phase red I don't know what's going on with this team. I don't know if they're going to break up or what. I, f I don't know when the next roster changes are going to go down. It's going to be after season two or whatever. I know they probably already have their rosters set for that. I yeah, I think they do. They already started playing league matches, I'm pretty sure. So I feel like this team's going to break up. I don't know. I'm not really sure what direction this team's headed in. But they are a really good team when they do focus up and everything like that. And they do have the possibility of winning events. But, you know, we'll just have to see. They argue quite a bit. Definitely isn't a long-term team if you just look at the personalities on this team. Not a long-term team, but they are really, really good when they when they put their mind to it. They have the opportunity to go to any event and win. They, they're one of the teams that you're like yep they could win this event also i kind of feel like phase red could have beat denial the thing about phase red is they lost both of their their matches to tr they lost to them in winner's bracket and they lost to tr in loser's bracket so we never they never lost to anyone else so you know maybe they could have beat denial i don't know they just didn't match up well with tr and they could not beat TR. Maybe, who knows, if, if the cards were, were dealt differently, Phase Red could have been our champion. So anyways, that's just something to point out as well. Now, let's talk about OG. I think this is the moment everyone has been waiting for, right? To talk about OG. So first, I will put their stats on the screen from champs. Obviously, the first thing you notice is that Skump went off. If you saw any of the top 10 KDs and stuff, you know he's obviously gone off. Now, I'm going to also put the stats from the last three events that they won on the screen. And I want you guys to notice that basic, literally the stats are the same. It wasn't like what people were saying on Twitter or whatever. The stats weren't too different to what people were saying. They were freaking out on Twitter until you notice one thing. These stats that you're seeing are combined with pool play and bracket play. These are not bracket play only stats. Now, when I show you the bracket play only stats, that's when you realize what truly went wrong with Optic Gaming. Because if you look at these stats, these are almost identical to the last three events that they won. So you'd think they'd win this one as well because everyone did what they were supposed to do. Not quite. I'm going to now show you the bracket play stats and you'll understand what went wrong. So bracket play only against good players when it really mattered on Saturday and Sunday. Scump. Highest KD, 1.26 formal 1.07 kd still good not that amazing especially for an ar crim 0.99 can't i can't remember the last time crims had a negative kd on land let's be real for that and nade shot 0.85 kd on bracket place so now when you look at those stats you see that scum still did his thing what he's been doing the last three events but you see that formal crim and nade all three of them did not play up to the standards that they have played the last three events now, the reason I'm comparing it this way is because, you know, the last three events they won, they weren't playing against random foreign teams. They were only playing against good competition. So I'm, I'm comparing it that way. And you get a true understanding of what's kind of going down. Now, another stat I want to bring in there as well is their hard point stats. They went five and three in hard point over the course of the weekend. And that's not something you expect from this team. This is usually one of the better hard point teams. You know, at regionals, they only lost one hard point and it was to phase red. So to lose three, I mean, I, that's, that's not very good you know five and three that's not a record you expect from such a, a dominant slaying team so i'm going to put up the hard point only stats on the screen now and you see skump is the only one positive and he is extremely positive for formal and crim especially formal to have a negative kd on hard point is 100 percent unacceptable any ar not just formal don't think i'm just narrowing it down to formal attacking him or something like that any ar should never have a negative kd on hard point their job they should never even be on the hill really their job is to just slay so for them to have a negative kd means they're not doing their job which means they lose aka why you guys saw all of optics hard points i think except for like i think the one against tk on retreat 
retreat, they they blew him out. Not TK. Was it SB? I don't know. Is he a T? I think it's SB. I don't think they. Well, they played TK, but it was like a seventh, eighth, like placement match or whatever. I don't know. The one on uh, retreat versus SB, they blew him out by like 100 points. Uh, but I remember the one against BZ came down to like the last five seconds. Skump got like an eight piece to win them the game, and obviously they lost three of them, and you know they only won five, and then you know only one of them. Was a blowout, I think. Anyways, basically, they played shitty in hardpoint all weekend long. And that's another point I'd like to bring up because with this Optic team, they really, in my opinion, rely on momentum quite a bit. And hardpoint is always the first series on every map. and Well, the first map in every series, I flipped that around. And for them to, to lose quite a bit of them and not play so well in hardpoint, I think that really affected them this weekend as well. I know they lost that first hardpoint to Denial when they got 3 one So, I mean, overall, I think this probably played quite a bit of a role in their, in their success this weekend and why they didn't really have that much success. So I wanted to throw that in there now overall just an eye test for me now Let's no more talking about statistics or whatever just an eye test of me watching them and seeing what was going on in My opinion scum did his thing. He was very consistent almost every single map He was positive and he was quite positive and he was dropping numbers. He was doing his thing. The stats don't lie He, he did what he needed to do formal did not have his best event Krim did not have his best event and Nade did not have his best event. The whole Nade using the HBR thing, I think he only used it in respawn one time. He, he tweeted and said it was an accident or whatever bullshit. I don't know, whatever. He is under the pressure that he wants to use it in S&D. And I know firsthand experience from Black Ops 2, I literally argued with him about it on Twitter. He's not going to change his mind. Krim has told him not to use the HBR. If he ain't going to listen to Krim, he definitely ain't going to listen to anyone else. So he's going to continue using it. If you don't like it, I mean, I don't know what to tell you, man. He's going to use it. He has it convinced in his mind that it's good to use and he is not going to change his mind for anyone. I mean, if, if literally the smartest player in Call of Duty is telling you not to do something and you refuse to believe him. I mean, who the fuck are you going to believe? You know what I mean? At that point, it's just on him. Whether or not it's effective or not, I don't know. I've never fucking played on LAN, but if he's the only one out of, you know, hundreds of players using it, probably isn't a good idea. That's just the way I look at it. I know a lot of people are giving him shit about using the HBR. That's my take on it. I mean, if Krim tells me to do something, I'm fucking listening. He's a much smarter player than I am. That's the, that's the way I look at it. Anyways, moving on from that, basically, this is what happened. If you guys look at the last three events, Denial, they played Denial in the finals, right, of the last two events. The first time, they, they shit on them. 3-0, destroy Denial. The second time, they 3-0 Denial again, but all three maps were pretty close. It came down to, you know, the last minute, I think, on every single map, and the search and destroy was close. So, you can see the progression from Denial. The Denial was getting better. Now we go to Champs. Denial beats them finally after the last event having an extremely close series with them. They beat them 3-1. That's that's kind of a thing. It, this wasn't something that just came out of the blue. Denial has been getting better every event. You can see it from them. Whereas OG has been staying the same and in my opinion staying complacent for the last three events. You know, they're winning. They're coasting. They came into this event overconfident. They thought, hey, we're just going to shit on everyone. And, you know, Denial came in hungry. They wanted it more in my opinion. They got what they wanted. Tweets I've been seeing from Clayson for like the last month. He wants it, man. He wanted it and he came in and he took it that that's what happened that's as simple as that and then the people that are blaming it on the bracket or whatever you can blame it on whatever reason you want to blame it on but the simple fact is three out of the four players on og did not play up to the standards that they should have been playing at to win champs and they got seventh place that's it's simple as that it, it has nothing to do with the fucking bracket it has nothing to do with you know anything else other than the fact they didn't play as good as they should have played you know people are saying you know why they have to play denial in the first round yeah they shouldn't have had to play denial that was a fucked up stupid wrong choice of making the bracket by the you know whoever the fuck made it i don't know but if optic was truly the better team they would have just beat them right denial was clearly the best the best team at champs the only thing you could say is that the maps would have been different had they played denial in finals instead of playing denial in the first round but if you actually look at the maps they played they got pretty favorable maps they got detroit hardpoint which they lost should easily they shouldn't lose to denial on detroit hardpoint seeing as clayster can't even use an ar to his full capabilities on detroit hardpoint it's more of a smg map and they have the best smg in the game in scump so scump and crim should not be losing a detroit hardpoint to anybody in my opinion that, that's just me then they got riot snd so they didn't even get a shitty snd they you know they could have got drift or terrace and they didn't so they got a decent snd they won the bio lab uplink and then they lose they lost a send CTF. They did get a shitty CTF. What can you do? All CTFs are shitty except for fucking retreat. So you're most likely going to get a shitty CTF no matter what. So honestly, the maps weren't that bad. Denial was simply the better team and they won champs and that's pretty much it. But yeah, that is my analysis. I'm talking for way too fucking long. Let me cut it out. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave your thoughts or whatever down in the comment section down below why you think Optic lost or whatever. That's the way I looked at it. They didn't play the way they should have been playing and it, it wasn't just one person's fault. It wasn't just Nate Shot's fault. 
fault. It wasn't just Krim's fault, and it wasn't just Formal's fault. All three of them were at fault. The only person that wasn't at fault was Skump. He played amazing. He's been playing amazing all of AW. Kind of weird how that works out, man. For the last two years, Black Ops 2 and Ghost, Skump carried the fuck out of that team. He finally got some good teammates in AW, and, you know, they were spreading the load equally, I guess. No homo. That sounded kind of weird. And then the biggest tournament comes around, and once again, Skump carrying the team. Dude just has bad luck, I guess. So, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like rating if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're not already. Follow me on Twitter. Links in the description down below. Other than that, have a good day, and peace out.